So uh, let me start with a little bit of a current situation. Um, uh, we've just been coming out of the pandemic and obviously the mindset of our business travelers has changed quite dramatically. Uh, it's not about why to travel, it's rather about how to travel nowadays. And during and post pandemic, we experiencing turbulent times, especially recently with the steep pickup of bookings and uh, the desire of our travelers to uh, go, go to places and again, again. And the processes, especially in corporate travel, have changed during the pandemic. And uh, we do now really see the impact of everything. To give you some examples, our consulting efforts actually have doubled um, uh, now after the pandemic and uh, our phone calls take up to three times longer than they used to do. So, Christoph, let me ask a question. From your perspective as VDR president, how do you see the developing in the current situation? Uh, first of all, hello, Franz. Hello, Sabine. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here uh, for this uh, interview or for this session today. Um, <clears throat> you, you have mentioned the mindset of the travelers has changed. Uh, I don't think that the mindset of the travelers has changed, but they have more questions than before. What I currently see and what my observation as well from my colleagues is um, that we have really many, um, or especially the TMC landscape has really a challenge um, in, in this strong demand, which is picking up drastically, um, uh, more or less out of a sudden. I mean, everybody was looking for it, but now um, with the restart, it is really um, heavily um, increasing. And also some have left the company uh, or the industry. Um, and some were still on short work. Uh, so they need to to come back to the office. Some have worked from home over a couple of um, months, almost two years. And um, and now to get familiar with, let's say, from from zero to 100. Yeah, um, this is, is a challenge. Yeah, And this is um, what I hear from the whole TMC industry um, that is extremely uh, challenging times. Uh, a lot of complaints, which doesn't make it also any better. I mean, I personally have understanding um, for, the, for the industry. Um, the travelers don't. Um, on one hand, they understand, but they have a demand and they need to fulfill. Uh, this demand needs to be fulfilled. That's really an absolute challenge. And I would almost see it as a call for emergency at the moment. Mm -hmm. Very good answer. Thank you so much, Christoph. And we can see some significant changes in the industry, like approval processes or opening the booking engines. And what do you think, Christoph? What are the significant changes for the business traveler or the travel manager? What are the significant changes? I mean, uh, the good thing is uh, we don't have this approval process anymore because uh, with this demand picking up um, as it is, um, <clears throat> it would be really a challenge. Um, but uh, I mean, we have we have different roles. Um, the, the the role of a travel manager itself became more complex over the past years. Um, we are also interface manager. Uh, we are responsible for the booking tools, but um, at the end of the day, we are also uh, procurement guys. Yeah? This means um, <clears throat> we have to make sure that um, we get good price um, or at least fair price for, for value. And that's a challenge as well because we see increasing prices everywhere. On one hand, based, to, um, or based on the current situation, what's going on in the Ukraine, um, which is, by the way, to be honest, much more uh, dramatic uh, compared to all the, the things we have to deal with. Um, and also, on the other hand, a very simple thing, uh, most of the, um, the suppliers really haven't had so, so much income over the past two years, um, and, and now they need to pick up to survive. I mean, um, that's uh, mm. um, economy of scale, um, what we are currently seeing. So we need to balance out a little bit um, having at least stability in the prices um, and to reduce the increase as much as we can. But also we have to guarantee um, that our travelers are uh, safe um, while they are traveling. It's a challenge for the whole industry in the moment. And thank you for 
your kind words and from your perspective and from VDR side. Mm. That's very yeah. good point. Thank Thanks you. for that. Uh, Christoph, um, you touched on quite a few topics which uh, yeah, came out of the pandemic situation and uh, lots of things have changed. One thing you didn't touch, uh, which uh, I think is also important, is the uh, sustainability uh, topic, yeah, which kind of uh, during the pandemic uh, was kind of wiped away and we were managing the crisis uh, uh, so-called. But um, yeah, the sustainability uh, topic is uh, definitely still a, a big topic for us at FCM uh, and surely also for all our customers. And we do start to get new requirements and questions when it comes to uh, sustainable travel. And there are lots of initiatives uh, on its way. Um, but we at FCM, uh, we don't see sustainability. And that's why we separated, uh, separated very uh, uh, yeah, big. Um, uh, since it's not a crisis, it's rather a sustainable uh, impact, uh, which will have big impacts on the industry as well, uh, on top of what we've just talked about. So um, we've also actually created a white paper. The audience is uh, invited to download this from our uh, web page. But uh, sustainability is a big topic. Christopher, how do you see this topic, sustainability? Has sustainability arrived in the companies? Uh, definitely. It is not new, by the way, because um, a lot of the companies um, were working on this since uh, some since many years. Um, but at least uh, since the last couple of years. Also with the VDR um, in 2020 was the year where we said um, we have to take care for the sustainability. So we had a slogan also for this, um, for this year. Um, but then the uh, pandemic situation uh, came in and stopped these activities, or at least we could also say it supported it very much um, because as no one was traveling, <clears throat> um, I mean, if, if someone had a sustainability target for business travel, I think everyone has achieved it over the past two years. Um, so that's not really new, but now it comes with, with really an, an impact. Yeah? And there's also um, um, now a, a rule from the EU, at least, uh, which um, requires companies above 500 employees um, to, to show a, a report every year what they are doing in regard to sustainability. They have to create sustainability goals. Um, um, and I think it becomes mandatory at least from 23 or 25. I would have <clears throat> to, to look into this. So everyone is working on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not not new, um, and and also I mean when you have asked me before, um, what would be the situation um, after after Corona? Will business travel be the same as before? I would have said, um, yes, it will be uh, the case uh, after after Corona. Um, but now with this uh, on top with the sustainability activities, which comes obviously with pressure now in the companies. Um, and I think this will have a, a bigger role um, in, or has a bigger impact in the future on the reduction of, of business travel. But before I come to another point, which have maybe an, an, uh, an impact on the other direction, um, the challenge what um, most of the companies currently have is where do I get the figures from? And even when I have the figures, does it mean is it good or is it bad? Because it's, it's, it's new. Yeah. Um, Do I have now to put all my employees into coach class on long distance trips because uh, it's less carbon two footprint? Um, do I have to put them all in nonstop? I think the, the, the right way is something in, in between um, to manage it. But first of all, they need to have the data, analyze the data and need to understand what to do with it and how you can have an effect on this. So this is really the, the biggest I would not really see it as a challenge because numbers are there. There are companies who can support here, but um, making this visible, this is for me more the, the biggest challenge. And the, the, the rest is for the, uh, it's, it's like a little bit with, um, if once you have numbers, you can create goals, targets. Um, also, we are thinking here besides the, the budget that you have not only the money budget that you have also maybe for a department, a carbon two budget. So this could be at the end of the year, Uh, you might have still money, but your carbon two budget is gone. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, but this is in the uh, how we say in the in the kinder shoes. Yeah. Um, we have to <clears throat> to see how this uh, 
turns out. Um, for, for us, it was here at least not such a big challenge because we are tracking our carbon two front bin of uh, the company I'm working for since 2008. So we have already a good, good overview and also to see how it goes, goes up and down. But on top of this, there might be now another effect. Um, sustainability, by the way, is for um, most of the companies who are production companies, anyhow, something of utmost importance. And the focus is for sure on their production side, because this is usually the biggest emission part. If you are not a consulting company or an IT company um, where travel has definitely a big impact, um, they have other things to work on. Of course, travel also. But now, with what we are seeing currently, um, everybody is also checking what is my supply chain look like. I think there will be a change as well. People will not, or the companies will not rely on one source in the future anymore, except you don't have any other choice. Yeah? Where do I get my raw material from? Um, does it make sense to have only one supplier from one country or do I have to spread this? I mean, the latest developments um, uh, in the geopolitical world um, speak a different language. So I would expect that people want or that the companies will um, work on their sustainability chain or on the um, supply chain in the future um, a little bit from a different perspective um, and bring it to a broader uh, landscape, which means um, also or what could could come with increased travel because um, having a, a broader landscape means also you have to travel, you have to validate your uh, new partners, you have to create trust, you have to create relationships and so on. So exciting times anyhow. Definitely exciting times. To be honest, since COVID, I love to travel per train and I come per train to Berlin this day and the train was really crowded, to be honest. And um, this is part of my next question, Christoph. Can you see that the travel behavior made a big change for the, for the traveler? Is there rethinking which kind of, um, of, 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 of train or flight they will choose? If this is really uh, depending on train or flight, <clears throat> I think that the, the bigger the bigger change is is um, at the moment at least that people are really thinking: Do I really have to travel? So this is the first question, um, and do I have to travel for just one meeting for an hour or two? I, I don't think so. And I think also, which is good, it is accepted um, also on the the other end that you are just joining via video conference um, and also with, with all the, the technical improvements over the past two years, it's easy to join um, and it's also accepted. Maybe not the initial one, but if you are familiar and know each other, um, I think people would try to avoid uh, a travel behavior like this. So that's, that's um, on one hand, the, the bigger change. And also maybe they combine uh, the travels, don't go for just one trip, maybe they combine one, two, uh, trips. Um, so this means they are away, maybe in total a little bit longer, but maybe less. So the frequency, and I think this is the biggest change, will uh, will be reduced. And depending on taking a flight or a train, um, I mean, if you have really managed it properly in the past, you should have always decided what is the most efficient way to travel. Um, for me personally, I have to say, I mean, if, if I can reach my, my final destination by, by train within four, maybe 4.50 um, or four and a half hours, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, if it is more than five and you have to change uh, several times because also the, uh, it's most likely that you miss one, one plane, um, it, it starts getting um, boring. But on one hand, I understand what you mean. And I also like um, traveling on Deutsche Bahn, for example, the, especially when the network is uh, or that the, the Wi-Fi is running <clears throat> and you can work. Thanks, Christoph. We've discussed uh, those topics quite often also in the past in, uh, within the VDR forums, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, we've also discussed uh, how important or the importance of a team C by itself uh, in the future. Uh, there were all of these 
big stories about everybody will look online only in the future. Why do we need a team C, etc.? Um, and uh, it was always good to hear, especially from you, but also from others, to say no, especially in corporate travel, a team C, a travel agency, in simple terms, is very uh, uh, important. And yes, we have seen this uh, definitely also throughout the pandemic, and we even more see it now. Such a strong demand, and I referred to it earlier, um, the the time uh, which is needed to service our customers, the questions our customers have nowadays is crazy. Yeah. Uh, and especially when it comes to rebooking, servicing bookings, cancellations, etc. When you get stuck, you just revert to that as well. You miss your train is uh, definitely um, the answer to this. And uh, my, my view on it is it doesn't scare me uh, whatsoever. Um, rather the other way around. I do see opportunities to actually work way closer with our customers yeah, and support them in process, in servicing, in helping them on business trips. And uh, I think that's something for all of us to, re to remember and uh, especially to yeah, think about when we look at new forms of travel and new ways of working together uh, when it comes uh, to the relationship between a customer, a team C, and also definitely uh, and even more so the suppliers uh, we provide. And our question to you, Christoph, is what do you think? How will business travel look like in around about 15 years? Let's look in the future. Hmm. Um. Maybe you just look in the future. <laughs> okay, I, I take the glass ball there. Um, but um, maybe, maybe let me, let, let me start with uh, with one comment first um, um, on the the value of a TMC service. Um, I mean, there were really different uh, discussions over the past years, or, or several discussions. Do I really need it, and so on? And everybody says with online. Um, It's all getting better, but uh, the reality is that it has become more complex um, and it uh, doesn't look like that it uh, uh, will be easier. So you need to have at least someone um, who finally can help you answer a phone. And um, uh, for me, it was really also a pity to see that this kind of service, which I found is a absolutely extremely um Uh, valued service, for, especially for our employees, because we are not dealing here with our products and goods or boxes. Uh, we are dealing with one of our biggest assets, with, which are our employees, and they have the right and um, um, they should expect uh, a proper service. And um, I think it's nothing worse if you are in an emergency and try to reach someone um, and you have just a, a ringing phone. And, um, Therefore, um, I hope this industry uh, really comes a little bit back um, and, um, and that there is a, a, a deserved price tag behind um, of the service um, you are able to offer. Okay, just to, to let you know. Um, <clears throat> maybe you don't like this um, because, uh, I mean, the, the, the whole price development was only going, going down. Um, and um, by the way, I would be happy to to pay uh, for the TMC services a little bit more if the TMC is able to help me to bring um, the rest of my uh, travel costs down. But that's a different story. So room to for improvement. So what will be uh, the, the travel looks like in the next, yeah, let's say 10, 15 years? I mean, 15 years, it's uh, definitely a little bit too, too far uh, away. Um, I think the next couple of years will be a little bit different based on this what i have mentioned before um, the industry or the, the whole landscape is extremely challenging um, especially these days and it will take some time until we have clarity stability um, i mean this cannot be managed by, by us I, i just can hope that <clears throat> um, everybody is um, or at least those people who are responsible for it acting in a um, in a rational uh, and um, uh, yeah, at least peaceful way um, to come to a more stable situation. But however, I mean, um, what has happened, this will, will stay for quite some time and will definitely has an, an impact. Corona is something, if you ask me personally, people are used to it. Um, I was um, in the 
in the soccer stadium, by the way, or in the football stadium um, last weekend. Uh, the first time since, I don't know. Uh, and it was like before. Um, yeah. So, and, and it, it's good that it's coming back to a normal uh, situation uh, because it makes it complex. There will be still some some measures, but people are get used to it. And that's also the good thing. And based on also on, on all the crisis, people try to forget and then it becomes a little bit more normal. But um, also, I mean, there, there are significant costs for business travel. Um, and at the moment, they are increasing on, on one hand. So this means also that companies will have a look into it, um, not to um, leave it completely out of, out of sight. Um, and um, the bigger piece, as we have mentioned already, is sustainability, because this is in the interest of all of us. Um, it is also in the interest, for sure, of for our children and <clears throat> the generations uh, after us, um, that we have an, an eye on this and um, taking care for our environment. But on the other hand, I see also Im improvements because this uh, is supplier's business. Um, and um, on one hand, this is how they make money, how they create their business. Um, they have also sustainability goals. Um, at the moment, it seems maybe not really, uh, or it seems to be impossible how this could be really uh, sustainable, but they will find s solutions. And um, in general, I would say meeting. I mean, the, the traveling is the is just a, um, the vehicle to meet in person, um, and I think this is something which is which is important and will remain important because this creates trust, this creates understanding uh, what's going on on the other side, and um, I think this is is what it what is needed to have an efficient uh, business and and overall to have a, a peaceful um, uh, work and life together um, with, the, with, the, yeah, with all the nations and cultures in the world. And we have the great opportunity, Christoph, next week when we see each other at the VDR conference, uh, where we meet face to face. Uh, and, uh, Sabine and myself are really looking forward to it, uh, to exchange our ideas and to meet, uh, yeah, kind of the first time again with the German Corporate Traveler uh, Association and with all the participants. Thank you for organizing uh, this and uh, even furthermore, thank you for the great work you do in BDR. Uh, it's so important for all of us, um, everybody who participates in, in the corporate travel uh, um, part. And it's uh, so important for us uh, to, yeah, to, to have the chance to exchange, to work and help uh, in all the forums and all the different work groups uh, to work on the new way of travel. Uh, Uh, because that's what we have to do now. And that's not only uh, the changes we are doing at the moment. Um, and by the way, uh, let me pick up on one point before. If you are looking for a travel agency who can uh, help you uh, to generate savings, yeah, uh, we know somebody yeah, that can give you some ideas where to look. So uh, let's uh, exchange our business cards again next week uh, and hopefully we can help you. <coughs> Come back to the VDR Association, Christoph. Um, are there any points um, where we can help from a TMC perspective? So I love the cooperation with VDR and thank you so much to you and to your great colleagues. It's always a pleasure to work with them. But are there any things from our perspective we can support the VDR? Um, thanks, thanks for your kind, kind words. Um, and uh, it's, it's also good for, for me to see that Finally, what we are doing is at, at least for our members um, of the association, because with, without the members or creating something for the members uh, it would not make sense to me. Also, I think it's an added value that we uh, bring together here, corporates and suppliers on one hand, because um, my, my personal um way is that we, we can only be really successful if we work together um, uh, and not uh, everyone in a, in, a, in a silo because everyone has ideas and finally this needs to, to fit together and uh, here we are again about travel and meeting in person bringing people together is what it is worth um, for, uh, for working on this um, yeah what you can do I mean we have the different um, teams at the moment um, or the um, what is the exact name? Task Force. Yeah. Um, it's uh, currently it's VDR Next, 
um, before we had uh, the, the crisis team to get uh, back to, to business after Corona, which was already helpful um, to share insights, but also to share options, possibilities. And with this next, um, I think we have uh, more than 100 people participating in the different um, work groups. And um, I will be, it will be interested to see also, um, it comes now to the, to the more sustainable uh, solution, what the outcome will be, because this is also for our members that they have an idea, that they get ideas, uh, maybe some guidance, how to act and, and how to move forward. So I have no more questions from my side. And uh, I haven't. Uh, Christoph, thank you so, so much uh, for your time. Um, that was very uh, informative and very interesting to hear your view on pre, during and post-pandemic uh, situation.